What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. Week number seven, year number two of the franchise. And we currently sit at three and three, 500 on the season, which is good enough for second place in a pretty highly contested, I guess, NFC East. Only one game behind the Eagles and things could get mixed up and things could change here in week seven. Now, I just want to say thank you to all you guys that have been along for me uh, on this journey, whether it be this series, the St. Louis Sentinels, or my previous series, the Madden 23 Cupcake Relocation Franchise. Thank you so much. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, consider subscribing. I will be doing a jersey giveaway at 750 subscribers. Cannot wait to do that. And you should subscribe because you will have fun on this channel. I can guarantee it. Three things in life I can guarantee death, taxes, and you're going to have fun if you're subscribed on this channel. Now, I think this is a good time here in week seven uh, just to kind of look at our team and see how some of the guys are performing. So JJ Ford, I saw as I was entering the screen here, he's number one in the league in passing yardage at almost 2000 in his rookie campaign. So JJ Ford is definitely not having any trouble getting the ball downfield. He has 13 touchdowns, but also eight interceptions. So very curious to see if Mr. Ford leads the league in interceptions. I do like that almost 60% completion, which is a step up from Sam Howe last year. That much is for sure. Old B-Rob here, not really getting it done on the ground in terms of yardage and average yards per carry but he is finding the end zone at a high clip at eight touchdowns already nearly double digits dudley saxton haven't really got him involved too much but i feel like the times that we have he's made the most of his carries and then we look at receivers here terry mclaurin is number one on the team no surprise there at 463 yards and seven touchdowns curtis samuel he's he's doing fine I don't know why he was so upset last week, last episode. He was being all emo and saying that he wasn't getting featured enough. I mean, my man, you're second on the team in yards and second on the team in receptions. So I don't know what Curtis's deal is. But anyway, Bart Burns, our nice rookie tight end out of A&M, having a pretty good rookie campaign. And then also George Williams. He's gotten involved at times and he's looked OK, but I would say a lot of drops so far on the season for George. Now, um, we've only been sacked five times so far this season. So that's pretty good. We're keeping that old jersey pretty clean there for J.J. Ford. And I like to see that. Tackles, Cody Barton leads us and rookie Justin Hayward. So our two middle linebackers, which is no surprise there. Emmanuel Forbes and Cam Curl also in the low 30s. And then we got some of our other secondary players here like Derek Forrest, who I need to sign today. I cannot forget that. And then also Jartavius Martin tackles for loss. Jonathan Allen still killing it just like he did last season and sacks. Um, not really a lot of sacks. So, I mean, just like we don't give up a lot of sacks. Guess what? We don't get them either. Nobody more than one sack on the season. That has to change. But of course, the story defensively for the Sentinels team, Emmanuel Forbes with seven interceptions looking to maybe break the record this season i don't know we still got a long way to go i'd at least like to see him surpass trayvon Diggs from 2021 and get over 11 not sure if he's gunning for old night train lanes record from back in the 50s but i mean hey he's halfway there pretty much already as i mentioned jj ford just balling out the rook out of fresno gonna be taking on a couple fresno state quarterbacks today we're playing the new orleans saints and we got Derek carr and Jake Hayner is there too, so the uh, Fresno State alumni will be in full display, but JJ is leading the league in passing yards, which I like to see. Touchdowns, he's fifth, so he's, he's up there, and then picks, he does unfortunately lead the league, but I mean, it's not like it's by a tremendously high margin. I mean, you got guys like Watson and Mariota, who's now randomly on the Bucks, and Stroud, Kenny Pickett, they're right behind us, so I mean not like we're doing anything too crazy uh in terms of interceptions and then i'm curious to see brian robinson yeah 
Okay, Brian Robinson does lead the league in rushing touchdowns, so you love to see it from old B-Rob. Now just got to work on getting those yarded, the yards and the average yards per carry up a little bit. But there is a sight for sore eyes, if I do say so myself. Emmanuel Forbes with seven picks, leading the NFL. You love to see it. Next highest guy only has three. So Emmanuel is definitely separating himself from the pack. And of course, Jonathan Allen's tackles for loss, not going to show up on here, even though he has... 11 i don't know why because madden's weird and they have glitches for years that never get fixed but you guys already knew that you don't need me to tell you that but we know jonathan allen does lead the league in tfls with 11. We'll take one more crack here at Derek force i really want to bring him back he's been all over the field i've called his name so frequently now last week or two weeks ago we offered him a little bit less money than what he wanted initially but more years he said no to a four-year 28 million dollar deal I got to watch our cat because it's not really that great. And I, I'm pretty sure it's going to improve next year, but we might still be feeling the effects of like the Deron Payne penalty. So I'm not really sure what our cap situation is going to look like going into 2025. But I'm confident that if we give Derek a three year, I mean, I don't want to overpay him or four year rather. I don't want to overpay him that much. I do want to bring him back, but we'll go four years, $32 million. He better freaking say yes to this, and he's still unsure. So Derek playing hard to get. I see you, buddy. He's starting to like the offer, but he's unsure if the team gets him the future that he's looking for. Now, the only thing that is making his interest be way down is the scheme fit. I could go in there and try to change it just to bring him back, do a little cheese, a little uh, Swiss cheese, if you will, but I'm trying to keep it semi-realistic like in real life if a player wasn't interested a team wouldn't just change their scheme just for that player i mean maybe like a miles garrett or somebody like that i can tell you this much a team wouldn't change their whole entire scheme just to accommodate Derek forrest i did make one minor change at left tackle andrew wiley is now benched if you guys watched the last episode you know why we had a one play touchdown to terry mclaurin and it got called back because of an andrew wiley hold I don't know about these other coaches in the NFL, but I got to set a standard and I got to set a culture around here. If you take points off of the board, you're benched. I'm sorry. And it's not like Andrew Wiley is some amazing left tackle like a Ronnie Stanley or someone like that. So we got Larry Jenkins, who we drafted in the sixth round. He's hidden dev, so I need to get him some snaps anyways. The thing is, I mean, he's probably star like they're always star, but he has that hidden de development, which is probably star. I need to get him some snaps to get that overall up and maybe just maybe he could be a solid left tackle for us in the future or if nothing else a viable option for depth so andrew wiley sit your arse on the bench big brother larry jenkins the rookie from temple is coming in to block jj ford's blindside new orleans saints one and four on the season and this is our fourth straight away game so really need to get back to uh sentinel field we have not been in front of the home crowd in quite some time, Derek Carr, we're going to defend the medium pass. I uh, don't really see the Saints team doing too much. They look to be pretty abysmal in all the major categories. So let's air it out. Let's throw it deep. Let's have J.J. Ford just go balls to the wall, have a career game. I'm talking four touchdowns. I'm talking 400 yards. We're going to be confident and say that we can allow 20 points or less. Can we do that? I mean, probably not. But it is the Saints. They are a really bad team. And I feel like if there's any team that we can just ball out and have a great game against, I would have to think it's the Saints. So the rookie from Fresno and his squad going to get the ball first. The veteran from Fresno going to watch on the sidelines and see what the young man can do. Here's a fun little factoid for you. When Derek Carr was playing at Fresno, J.J. Ford was nine years old. That's right. He was nine years old. So he is looking to show the old man what he can do. He's leading the league in yards, as I mentioned, and uh, he's also leading the league in interceptions as well. So hopefully we see more touchdown passes than picks today. I think that any head coach would want to see that week in and week out. And we are going to start out in the gun here from the 21 tight shotgun formation. I see our rookie Bart Burns able to not hold on to the ball there as Tyron Matthew the Honey Badger breaks it up. Uh, our rookies, I would say my only squabble so far this season, right? I, I don't have many. I don't have many squabbles, but 
Our rookies have dropped a lot of passes, so we got to clean that up. Second and 10 here. Ah, oh, don't like any of it. Throw it away, Ford. They're going to get me for grounding. I'm sure they are. It's going to be a penalty and a loss of downs. And uh, third and 23, not starting out how I would have hoped. Okay, so we are on the eight yard line and at risk of going three and out and going negative yardage on our first drive, which is not good. Can Terry McClure, oh God, JJ, what are you doing? That was so inaccurate, that pass, not even close. And that was about as terrible as the opening drive could possibly go. We're gonna kick it to the Saints here after going three and out. We lost yardage. JJ Ford threw a couple inaccurate passes and the Saints gonna get great field position to start this one off. And there's the old man, the other guy from Fresno. Also got another guy from Fresno on this team who I highly doubt will see the field, Jake Hayner. Um, if Jake Hayner, I have a better chance of being struck by lightning twice while recording this video live on camera than Jake Hayner has of seeing the field. Ooh. At any rate, gotta make sure Derek Carr doesn't uh, kill us on this drive. He is gonna check it down to Michael Thomas, the longtime veteran who catches it and then gets injured. Yeah, we just did not look good on that opening drive, man. We cannot be coming out and starting games like that. There's Alvin Kamara, ever shifty as he may be. Cam Curl's gonna get him and able to limit him to a minimal Game. So that is going to bring up third down. Let's see what Carr does. Does he pass it or does he possibly uh, put it in the hands of Kamara and trust him to pick it up? I could see it going either way. It is going to be a Kamara run and he is going to pick up the first down and much more. Finally pushed out of bounds by Jartavius Martin, but that was a pickup of 21 on third and short. Send a little pressure at Derek Carr here. He's way too comfortable back there in the pocket. I'm not liking what he's doing, and that's going to be a catch and a touchdown to Juwan Johnson. So the Saints defense made our life a living hell, and their offense came out, took care of business, and drove it down the field. This team is 1-4. Remember, this team is 1-4, Looking like four and one, if you ask me. And apparently we may have our work cut out for us today. This could be a streak situation to Bart Burns. Looking like he won't have any coverage there. We're gonna give it to him and there we go. Man, oh, he fumbled it in the ball. No, he's down. Give me a booth review. Give me a, give me a booth review. Come on, Demario Davis picks it up. I think, me thinks that Bart Burns was down. Booth review. That one should easily be coming back, which it will. So no worries there. God, are we playing the one and four Saints or are we playing prime Kansas City Chiefs? I, you, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. All I know is these uh, Saints are playing lights out here to start. Hopefully Brian can get something on the outside, which he will have the speed trying to turn up field. Brian going to pick up 17 on the play, which is just what the doctor ordered, taking us into Saints territory. We'll try Dudley Saxton out of the little inside zone here on this one, hoping for some good blocks. We got him momentarily, but then we are just drove to the turf by veteran superstar X Factor Demario Davis. This Saints team, they got some pieces. I mean, you know, even in real life, they, they definitely got some pieces. Um, I think they're semi in rebuilding mode, but not 100%, but it's second and seven. Let's see who wants to get open. I think it's Terry. Way to hang on to that dangerous throw. Terry is able to haul it in for a pickup of nine. We're gonna try Dudley Saxon again. Uh, don't really have anybody in the box, so one would think this could be an easy pickup, which it will. Dudley looking for more. Dudley Saxon picking up a nice gain. And now we got this ball all the way to the 23. JJ Ford has his dots X factor activated. Terry could be in single coverage as well. We'll see if I want to test it. Oh, we're going Bart. We're going Bart. Hang on to it. Bart Moss him. Oh my gosh. Bart Moss, the rookie Carlos Whitehead out of Wisconsin. The Saints fifth round pick. He absolutely owned him. Got it all the way down to the one yard line. And look at that. High degree of difficulty on both the pass and the catch, it had to be uh, in the exact right spot, and it was. And Bart Burns making a heck of a catch. So now, three chances to get it one yard. We should be able to pound this in with Brian. 
which we're not on that one. Got to figure that Brian can pick up one yard here. Hate to say this is a uh, four down territory, but you don't want to get this far down into the uh, opposing team's territory and not come away with six. So come on, Brian. And what is going on? Oh, my Lanta. Three chances to get it in. And Saints are looking for a goal line stand. I won't allow it. Call me gutsy. Call me ballsy. Just don't call me late for dinner. Stick. Why stick to Terry? I'm hoping he can pick this up. And thank you for hanging on, Terry. Oh, my God. I can't believe Brian Robinson had three chances to get it into the end zone. And Demario Davis and this defense stood us up three straight times. And you know what? I'm fine with that call because if we don't get it, Saints got to go 99 yards. Although, let's be honest, in Madden, that may not be a good thing. Teams seem to... uh always pick up like huge chunk plays when they're inside the five yard line but at any rate we tie it up on a very difficult drive i don't like this saints team man i thought this was going to be easy and so far they are giving me a run for my money and that is going to be a nice slant there on the outside by at perry rookie in real life second year pro in this game Derek cars coming out slinging it would appear he's coming out doing exactly what he is supposed to do and he's, he's got my my defense a little shook here. There's Jamal Williams, Mr. Anime himself, uh, channeling forward with the Naruto run, picking up seven on that play. Saints are into sense territory again. So they are, uh, again, pretty much doing whatever they want to. There's a nice tackle there by rookie Justin Hayward out of Miami, who has been playing very well. Interceptions in his last two games. He has two for sure. I think it's in the last two games. And a ton of tackles, getting all over the field. He is doing uh, everything that you like to see out of a rookie linebacker. That much is for sure. Jamal Williams in the backfield now on this third and one. We'll see if he goes to Williams. He will! And a diving tackle by Cam Curl. They will surely go for a field goal, but it will not be an easy one. So that was an interesting quarter. Saints outgained us on the ground. We outgained them through the air. But they're playing much tougher than I would have expected. We'll see if they stick with the field goal. They will. And this will be about a 54-yarder, roughly. So we will see if they can boot it through the uprights. I'm certainly hoping not. And that kick is going to be wide left from Jake Verity. Never had a shot. Sentinels are going to take over with great field position. Starting from the 45. Need someone to set the edge for Brian so we can get a nice run. And just nobody can hold a block from Yatur Gross Matos. And I'm really trying to make it a point to try to pound the ball outside. It's very, I feel, this is just me, it's much easier to run inside in Madden, but I'm really making it a point to try to pound the ball outside so far, it's not working. So second and 14, we still got dots active. And right now we're just looking for a route to get open downfield and nothing ever did. Okay, yes. we're going to it here in the second quarter. You guys know what it is. I don't got to tell you what the play is. I feel that this is the time. This is the time to call it. We got to call it here. Let's see if uh, Samuel can get open. Can we get it to him? No, we can't. This coverage from New Orleans is locked down let me tell you what lock down their defenders are staying with us tick for tack and i am not seeing anybody get open downfield so i don't know what the heck that uh dennis allen and the boys were talking about pre-game but it appears to be working was there a title update or something i don't know this game seems much tougher than uh any games in recent memory and, and it's against a not really a good team but I just feel like offense is tough for us right now. Uh, our defense isn't playing good. The Saints are pretty much moving. I realize, you know, it's only 7-7. Still a lot of football left to go. But something just feels different. I can't really put my finger on it. Car coming out shotgun. We'll see where he goes on the field here. He's looking for Camara. Ran a nice route and able to keep his feet in bounds. I thought he was going to go out of bounds. Surely he did not. Kamara able to pick up good positive yards. I need Jonathan Allen and Montez Sweat just to win instantly in the trenches. That's what I need to happen. And right on cue. Okay. Look who it is, Mr. Allen, with his 12th tackle for loss of the season, doing exactly 
what we pay him to do, doing what he does best, and stopping Jamal Williams for a loss in the backfield. Let's go pressure again. I think that that's the right call. It's going to be, oh, I thought that was going to be a handoff to Williams. It's not. It's a dump off to Foster Moreau. Getting very close to first down yardage, making it third and one. Car seven for seven so far in this game. Perfect completion. Not confident that this one here won't be a dump off to Alvin Kamara or I should say a run, which it will be. And he's going to get it easily. Tried to put the juke on Cam Curl. He didn't juke him, but he was able to move the chains. Car coming out shotgun. Jamal Williams behind him. And these Saints receivers are just open there's open all the time i don't know what's happening that's rookie peter stein out of oklahoma state the same second round pick in this previous draft catching a nice ball in the corner and getting it inside the red zone saints coming out empty here so we're guessing pass and we are shading inside uh hopefully we can get them out of the end zone or rather not allow them in the end zone car with a killer 90 percent completion and this drive is also taking a lot of time off of the clock as well. And remember, the Saints will get the ball after halftime because we started with it. And did we start with it? Yeah, we did. I think, didn't we? Sack, come on, somebody get him. God, dude. I think that was Justin Hayward. I was user and he just stopped. Where is he? Where's Hayward? I've been talking highly about you recently. No, it wasn't Hayward. It was Jamin Davis, I think. Who is that? Yeah, Bruh. I mean, he's right. Look, that that could have been me, Userin. I was trying to put finesse moves, but right there, you got a beeline to the quarterback and you just, that was probably me. At any rate, we forced the incompletion, which is nice, but now we have to pick it. That's Cam, Cam Curl, house it, house call. Come on, you surely, you can outrun Jawan Donson. Thank you, Cam Curl, phone is ringing. Brr. Oh, wait a second. Don't get caught. Don't get caught. He won't. Who's that? Hello? House call. It's a house call for Cam Curl. Defense needed a jolt. They needed a, sp a spank on the arse. Cam Curl just spanked him. I realize that's very sus, what I just said. But, oh, man, he was looking for, I couldn't even tell. I think Chris Olave, maybe. But that is going to be a about a 101-yard house call pick six for Cam Curl. Curl. Really, really needed that, man. This defense was pretty much uh, just getting spanked by Derek Carr. And Cam Curl said, you know what? Let me take matters into my own hands. And when you have a struggling offense like we have so far in this game, which, did I, I mean, does, that doesn't even sound right. Struggling offense from the Sentinels? What? When you have a struggling offense, there is nothing like a defensive touchdown to turn things around. So let's see what Carr does now. Will he shake off the pick or will he stay aggressive? That is going to be a nice catch of completion there to rookie Peter Stein. It's looking like Derek Carr is not too phased after that uh, pick six. This will probably be a run to Jamal Williams. No, it's not. It's going to be a pass and nice break up there. Who else? Justin Hayward, who is slowly becoming one of my favorite rookies. I got to be honest, he is slowly becoming one of my favorite rookies. He was only normal dev, wasn't really too sure what we had uh, selecting him in the draft, but he's been making some great plays and just wide open. Speaking of rookies making plays, who is this Peter Stein guy, man? <laughs> Peter Stein, I remember seeing him in the scouting process in the draft. He did look very good. He's looking generational in this game. Now, where is number 88? I got to make sure that uh, we have eyes on this man because he's in motion right there. Uh, thought that was going to be a give. Oh, I completely, completely went uh, with Peter Stein on that one. That was me. That was all me. Gave Jamal, Jamal Williams the exact amount of space he needed to cut the edge. I should have known that it wasn't going to be an end around to, to Peter Stein. But I've just been calling his name so freaking much in this game. I was try I was trying to follow him. I was trying to stick with him, and it proved to be the wrong decision. This game tied back up now, 14 all. Still two and a half minutes to go as well, so we got to make sure whatever happens, Saints cannot have another opportunity to score here. Oh, nice juke from Brian. Completely uh, removed the jockstrap of one Demario Davis, which what?
That sounds even more sus. What I'm trying to say is he shook him out of his jock strap, but that's uh, not what I said. I said Brian Robinson removed the jock strap of Demario Davis, which uh, is very. Yeah, anyways, two minute warning looming. Let's see if Brian can pick it up. He is going to power through for a first down, and that will be the two minute warning. And we have two minutes to go down and hopefully punch this thing into the end zone. I think that I would like to have Curtis Samuel on a drag in case nothing develops downfield, which it doesn't look like it's gonna. So we're going to check it down to Curtis, who is making multiple defenders miss. Uh, he was very upset last episode. He said that we were not featuring him enough in our scheme. And then I proceed to show you his stats, and he is second on our team in yardage. So Curtis Samuel appears to be a bit confused. Second and three, we got our big six foot nine receiver George Williams out here and uh, not going to target the big man. We're instead going to go underneath to McLaurin, and that is going to move it into Saints territory. I want to hit Dudley on this Texas route, but you know what? I also see... McLaurin getting pressed as well. So let's actually put Jahan Dotson on a slant. And I might actually target Terry on this one, which um, actually not. But we're going to go to Jahan on the slant. Get out of bounds. Nice job going through my progressions. And now we are almost into the green zone. First and 10. Ball is on the 27-yard line here. Need to make something happen. So we're going to look for some crossers maybe on the outside and I like Jahan Dotson again. Jahan gonna catch it, turn up field and go out of bounds. So with 40 seconds, we got the ball on the 10 yard line. Playbook kinda open, not 100%. We definitely, only having that one timeout is not good at all. So we definitely gotta be smart with our play calling. Let's put Curtis Samuel on a streak, I guess. Maybe clear up that side of the field could be Jahan Dotson again, possibly, which, nope, it's Bart. It's rookie Bart. There's Bart. I like Bart Burns. I do like Bart Burns a lot. That's about his third touchdown, I want to say, this season. He's come up with some clutch catches. Really ha happy that we drafted him. I really wanted the tight end Logan Paul, a.k.a. Paul Logan. If you guys have been following since last season, you would know all about him. Didn't get him. He fell to... I forget who got Paul Logan. Can't remember. But uh, Bart Burns, next best option. And we go up 21-14. Carr having a great first half. 177 yards. Great completion percentage. And, of course, the one touchdown and the one pick. But the only stat that matters is the score. Sentinels do have the upper hand in that department. Probably going to switch some things here with our focus. But looks like we're in for an exciting second half. Big focus here for the second half. Take away the middle of the field. I feel like Derek Carr completed more passes in the middle of the field than Derek Carr ever should. And I'm not too happy about it. I got to be honest. I'm not too happy about it. There's Jamal Williams and the running backs also had a pretty good first half as well. As I would say, they split reps. I've seen a lot of Williams back there and I've also seen a lot of Kamara back there as well. But again, it's going to come down to sacks, man. We have to find a way to sack Derek Carr. I think, oh, okay, delayed draw. Wasn't expecting that, but Kamara actually loses one on the play. Guessing pass, shading over top, doing what we do here and hoping that we can maybe get the Saints off of the field. I got to have eyes on number 88, and nope, that's going to be a nice catch there by Olave, and he's got all kinds of Sentinels. Over him, Derek Carr found the soft spot in the zone, and his good night continues, it would appear. First and 10 here, very close to Sentinel's territory. We'll see what Carr does out of the shotgun, and okay, that was nice press coverage there from Cam Curl. He was looking to air it out, but the pass was a little bit errant. I think that uh, Cam Curl did a good job staying step for step with them, and guess what? We are going <laughs> blitz again. We're going blitz again here. I'm bound and determined to get a sack on Derek Carr or, ooh, I was about to say, somebody please, ta somebody please tackle A.T. Perry. You got to be freaking kidding me. How does that happen? How does that happen? We had like two chances. It's A.T. Perry, man. It's A.T. Perry. Wasn't even a great read. I thought we were going to have a chance with the pick. Jartavius Martin couldn't get him. Emmanuel Forbes 
ran the wrong way. He broke another tackle from somebody. And again, am I playing the Dallas Saints? Am I playing the Buffalo Saints here? I mean, what is going on? It's the one and four Saints. And this is what this is what happens. Sentinels play bad teams and make them look great. And then we play teams like the Cowboys and hold them to seven points. It makes no sense to me. I need Dudley Saxton to do something on a kick return. Is that even possible in Madden? Apparently freaking not. I switched my focus to run inside because uh, Brian Robinson had a pretty tough day at the office. And now he is. Oh, keep going. We needed one more block from John Bates. Brian now up to nine for 40. But that is definitely what I wanted to see. We have got to get the run game established here, whether it be Dudley Saxton or Brian Robinson. I don't really care. I will take any of them, but someone, someone has to get something going. And there's a nice hole for Dudley as well. And he will pick up eight, which I am totally cool with. About screen pass to Brian Robinson here on second and two. Hopefully we can get this pass off, which we will. Got decent blockers downfield. Brian trying to make some man miss. He's doing a decent job of that. JJ Ford now up to 136 yards. Let's try some foolery here. We'll send Curtis Samuel in motion. And the Saints are in man. Very interesting. We're going to snap this ball to Brian Robinson anyways. Need a good block on Demario Davis. We got it. Making some men miss. Brian looking like that run inside focus at halftime. Paying dividends. Well done. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? We'll give it back to Brian. Oh, God. Demario Davis, Pete Werner, everybody was uh, right there to meet Brian in the backfield. We had no, virtually no blocking up front. And it kind of showed on that one. So key third down here. Uh, we got Brian Robinson possibly on the out route. Jahan Dotson possibly on a streak. Terry McLaurin getting doubled. I don't like that. We're going to try Bart. Bart hangs on. Question is, do we go for it here or take the points? I mean, was it ever really in question? Uh, we we got to go for it. Surely Dudley can pick this up, which he will. Nice block set on the outside by our receiver, Curtis Samuel. That was big. Um, Could have been a controversial call. And maybe I should have kicked, you know, the field goal. But I feel like with the way that the Saints are moving the ball in this game, we need to match them. We got to score a touchdown. So let's see. We'll check it down to Brian out of the backfield. Brian picking up eight. So his amazing second half will continue. We'll motion over Bart Burns here. ID up to Mario Davis as the mic. Hopefully Brian can just power this thing into the end zone, which he will. Flex on him, B-Rob. That drive was all Robinson and Saxton. That is power football. At its finest, we really needed that because so far, J.J. Ford is clean on the uh, turnover category. And the Saints go back in front. The Saints, not the Saints. The Saints go back in front by six. Back and forth game here in the Bayous. Uh, Derek Carr and the Saints offense playing great. Our running game just stepped up last play and played great. So there's going to be a give to Kamara on the outside. Derek Forrest and company are there to meet him but he and uh oh that was actually jamal williams okay i thought it was did i say williams or Kamara. i don't really care it was one of the saints running backs anyways and the running backs are playing good whether it be williams or Kamara. i feel like they are uh both stepping up and williams had a slight hole there for a minute but uh, cam curl the recipient of that pick six earlier was able to stop him and they are going zero what? wide receivers out of the gun however doesn't mean it's going to be a run. I mean, it probably will. We'll show blitz just in case. But it does not mean that it's going to be a design run to Carr. And I think he's short. No. They're going to say he got it by a short and curly. Man. That was, that was good. That was a gutsy call. Third quarter winding down here. Fourth quarter is looming. And I think that we're going to have a good one. Going to be a play fake. Please, can we get some pressure? Please. That's all I'm asking. And there's number 88. I hate that man. Peter Stein. I, do I got a trade for this man? Do I got a trade for this man? He is. He's killing us. I wonder if he's a superstar X Factor. Or I'm sure he's hidden dev. Gotta be hidden dev. Six receptions for 108 yards. Wow. That is uh, absolutely nuts. But at any rate, we're still up on the scoreboard. Saints 
pretty much dominating us in yards. But somehow we found a way. That missed field goal from the Saints has something to do with that, I'm sure. But uh, somehow we found a way to stay in this one, stay competitive, and God forbid, I'm watch. I, I just got to always use her, man, on 88, I feel like. That's that's the guy. That's the man. A little check down there to uh, Juwan Johnson. That's going to bring up second and eight. We got our big 4-4 four, four defense in here, fully expecting the run. Watch it be a play fake or something like that. It is. And there, there's the sack. Thank you. Jonathan Allen, more of a presence in the run game. That might be his first sack on the season, maybe a second. I don't know. At any rate, it came at a very good time. And now we can kind of pin our ears back. Where's number 88? 88's okay. We're going to have to probably use her control Khalil Mack because 88 is the guy here in New Orleans. It would appear. And look, when you take away 88, where's Derek Carr going to go? That is what I should have been doing from jump, I had Khalil Mack out there in coverage and the corner running step for step with Peter Stein. And it looks like when you take away 88, Derek Carr gets flustered. So I guess that is the recipe for success. And now we got a chance to go up two scores here and really uh, put our stamp on this thing. Terry's getting pressed, but you know what happens when I rely on that too much, but I can't pass it up, man. I can't pass it up, man. Only a matter of time. He was getting pressed by the Honey Badger, too. Tyron Matthew, main goal of this drive, score, obviously, but milk the clock a little bit. So let's go screen pass to Dudley Saxton. Can we get some nice blockers downfield? We do. Dudley has 93 speed. Watch out. That is why we picked him up. J.J. Ford, 197 yards, but two touchdowns and the most important key stat of this game, zero turnovers. J.J. leads the league in interceptions, so I think... Doesn't matter if he has, you know, 400 yard game or something like that. Just got to play smart football and Brian trying to find a crease there, but he is brought down there by Rasheem Green after Green after only a gain of three. Exactly. This could be a Bart streak again. I don't know. We got Demario Davis there. Let's see what he does. If not, we could have George Williams, which I think we're just going to be safe and give it to the big man who powers through, breaks tackles. And now we got this thing inside the 20 in the red zone with only six minutes to go. So this drive is exactly the type of drive that I wanted. They want us to run outside, but I mean, I've made my focus run inside. So you have to figure that that would make the uh, blocking a little sus on these outside runs. So we'll go ahead and keep it inside here. Field goal, not the worst thing in the world. I will certainly settle for that if need be, because that would still make it a two score game. Don't necessarily want to pass it but it's what the coach says to do i mean it probably is the best call here terry let me see hold on terry on a streak he if he gets open quickly nope not gonna do it uh we'll trust samuel who had a chance to haul it in but again making it a two score game not the worst thing in the world Still puts the pressure on Dennis Allen and the Saints. And uh, another big defensive stand here. And this one might be over. It is third and 10 here. We're going to quarter up. Hopefully play good zone coverage here. And that'll put the Saints in a fourth down, which you got to figure if it's a fourth down. Oh, oh God. That uh, is Jawan Johnson. Not number 88, Peter Stein. That is Jawan Johnson getting open in the middle of the field. And giving the Saints a little bit of life here on this potential final drive for them. All right, need some pressure. Another, another big sack on Carr would be lovely. And no, how about not a touchdown there to Jawan Johnson? So Carr goes over 300. Jawan Johnson, look, the Saints, you think Michael Thomas, you think Chris Olave. You don't think Jawan Johnson. And of course, you don't think Peter Stein because he's not real. Aww. But... The receivers that you would typically think would be doing damage, not really doing anything in this one. And it is that man, Olave, who I just said he wasn't doing anything. He must have heard me. Now Saints go in tempo as well. They are threatening to score here. So got to be very careful. Hopefully we can have our defense come up with a big play. Carr can't find anywhere to go. He can. But he stopped at the one yard line. They're going pressure again. They're, they're going to score on this drive. You know they're going to score. 
It's just so obvious. Or, oh my God, Kendall Fuller had a chance on the pick, but A.T. Perry, who has made some phenomenal catches in this one, comes down with it. That was a high degree of difficulty. High degree of difficulty. And I'll tell you what, Kendall just really didn't do anything on that play. I mean, he, he kind of just like gave up before it was uh, even over. All right, so here's the dealio. Here's the scoop. Here's the 4 one, one We can just get a couple first downs. This game should be over. So let's please try to do that. And let's not get intercepted by a, a defensive lineman. Which oh, suggestions yeah. say PA cross, which I don't actually hate that. This could be a, a good call indeed if we get some protection. Right now, we're going the wrong way, and we're going to let this clock tick down as far as humanly possible. If we don't get a first down here, Colts or Colts, not the Colts, Saints will have a chance to tie or win. So I really want to do that. Come on, Samuel. Come on. That is picked by Marcus May. This is my nightmare. This is literally my nightmare. I mean, Curtis was open. Oh, JJ was clean on the touchdown interception ratio. I mean, he's open enough. You got to lead it out in front of him a bit. And Ford didn't really do a good job of that. Marcus May with a diving acrobatic interception. And that very well could cost us in this game as uh, it didn't look like we could do anything to stop the Saints on their previous drive. And they're already in, it's going to be a field goal, at least, unless we force a turnover or something like that or get a couple sacks on car. That's a nice way to start. I uh, do not like this at all, guys. I got to be honest. I don't have a warm, fuzzy feeling about this, especially if nobody can tackle Jamal Williams. Third and one. Injury timeout because Chase Young goes down to the turf. And man, oh, man. If I was looking at the ESPN app right now, I would say Saints have probably about a 86.2% chance of winning this one. Um, but nice TFL there by John Allen. And you know what? We're going to call a timeout. Saints should surely kick this. If not, A, I'll be pissed. B, Dennis Allen's dumb. They will kick it. And that is perfect because that will give us roughly two minutes and all we got to do is get into field goal range. So that was a huge, huge TFL by Jonathan Allen. 31-31, but we have a decent amount of time to work with. Here's the question, though. Is this a Bart streak again? They keep doing this, and it has worked out quite often. Um, it's a Bart. It's a Bart streak. Oh, no, it's underthrown by Ford or overthrown, rather. I don't know if that's me or Ford, but we got to be careful on these. Need the blocking to hold up here because this is going to be play action out of the shotgun. So please. um, OK, Curtis, this is your chance to redeem yourself. What is Ford doing? The most important key stat of this game. Zero turnovers. JJ freaking Ford, man. Why? These are passes that he hits with regularity. I guess I should have hit Jahan right there. Probably, well, that's not even Jahan. It's George, big George Williams. I elected to go to Samuel. I guess I should have hit him sooner, but I also had that linebacker right there as well. Still though, man, right there is where, look, this is where I'm cocking back to release. Curtis is open. I realized so is Williams. I, I get it, but Curtis is open too, and the pass is just not there by Ford, barring something crazy. I don't see how the Saints don't kick this field goal and win it. It's a nice tackle there by Khalil Mack, but now John Allen is injured. We're guessing run here. We It's going to be a run, and it's going to be a tackle. Jamal Williams probably just... Sealed the game for the Saints, and uh, they're not calling a timeout, though. That's the thing. We're guessing run up the middle again, and if they don't get it, then we'll call a timeout. 
No way Carr passes this, right? No way Carr passes this. He will not, and we're going to stop. Jamal Williams got to call a timeout here. Oh, man, dude. The Saints team. They should not. How about a blocked field yeah. goal? Benjamin St. Juice has a couple of them already. Not going to get one there. Jake Verity is going to kick it through the uprights, but this game is dumb, man. J.J. Ford played so good. Clean football through three and a half quarters, three quarters, and somehow now he decides to start chucking picks. We have no timeouts. Maybe a great kick return from Dudley Saxton, but we know that's not going to happen, and I don't know what it's going to take. It's going to take... A lot. Right now, my goal is just to try to get McLaurin in single coverage, which is going to be hard to do, but maybe. I mean, we do got him in single coverage. Can Ford get it down there? No, he cannot. He what, didn't have time to set his feet, and there was no way that he was going to complete that. This is interesting. Saints not playing prevent defense. Only one high safety, so maybe we do get Terry on a shot here. We're going to try. I mean, I realize it's a long shot at best. Can you moss him, Terry? Almost had a chance there, honestly. This is a play that we got intercepted on earlier, but I don't care. We're going to try it. Um, Terry, what, what's... Oh, God, that's it. That's game. I don't know what Ford did on that one. I mean, we're only going to have one shot. The clock's probably... It is. That's game. Wow. 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 The freaking Saints, man. The one and four Saints. Beat us by three. Probably because of me. I do take some onus for that game. Bad passes there at the end. And that's a frustrating loss. Chance to go over 500. Still fairly early in the season. But a chance to go over 500. And you lose to a one and four team. Who just... I mean, play great. We we could never stop Derek Carr. 340. Ford with two touchdown passes, two picks. Brian Robinson kind of started to get it going towards the end, but still only 3.7 yards per carry. Kamara never saw too much action. Uh, Jamal Williams took a brunt of the carries, and this is the guy right here, Peter Stein, rookie from Oklahoma State. Absolutely carved us up. No receiver. From, for us, really did anything at all. And defensively, we had that big pick from Cam Curl. We had a sack from John Allen, who is now hurt, might I add. Frustrating loss indeed. I talked about that Ravens game being a loss that you can live with and that you're happy about. I mean, you know, you're not happy about it, but what I'm saying is you can hold your head high. Even though the scoreboard looks close, we had that game in the bag and John Allen is going to be out for a little while or no, it's actually Jahan Dotson. Okay. Out six weeks with a knee cartilage tear. And uh, we, we got some key guys out key offensive linemen, Brandon Scherf, Will Devlin. And uh, yeah, it's okay. We take on the apparently good Chicago bears next week, but the bears in the bucks, I would say, Pretty much must win games for us now. Luckily, the Cowboys aren't doing too well. The Giants aren't doing too well. And it's still too early to say the Eagles have pulled away. So that's why I say these next two games, very, very key for the St. Louis Sentinels. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.